Hello subscribers and non-subscribers and welcome back to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2. So it's been like a week, week and a half, something like that, since I last recorded a part of this series. Uh, stuff came up. If you're in my Discord, you'll sort of have an idea. I didn't really go into detail because it's personal. I didn't really see a reason to go into full detail for it. Um, but yeah. One thing I do want to go ahead and... Uh, and by the time you guys see this video, it'll have been like over a month. A um, couple things to go and mention real quick. Uh, so somebody mentioned on part one that you are able to design a ship that is slightly overweight. Um, technically speaking. So this would technically be a legal design because the ship is only slightly overweight. This does, when I looked at the manual, come with some downsides. Uh, namely that you have a penalty to flotation and stability. Uh, stability, I assume, will have a negative impact on um, your accuracy. I'm assuming is what they mean by stability, though I could certainly be wrong about that. Uh, but for flotation, that, I assume, will mean that the ship is more prone to um, flotation damage. So when it takes any damage that results in you suffering flotation damage, like say a torpedo hit, um, it's more difficult to basically get that under control. I assume is what it, that implies. The reality is I will pretty much never design a ship that is slightly overweight. There is just literally no reason to do that. Also, actually, I just realized we have all or nothing armor. Did we just get that recently? I think we did. So we actually have no, um, no dreadnoughts with all or nothing armor. And you cannot change that. Um, I, or I can't switch to an all or nothing armor scheme. So these, these ships are basically, I think, stuck with what they have. Yeah, you literally can't change it at all. So I'd have to design a brand new Dreadnought battleship if I wanted to have all or nothing armor on something, which is annoying. I'm assuming we just got that, like I said. It doesn't give me a date here, annoyingly, but I'm assuming that was a fairly recent occurrence. I... Yeah, I don't know. Either way, so we are attempting to invade the Bismarck Archipelago. I had to do a quick look before I started recording, so we're attempting to invade that. We should be able to invade that relatively easily. The Germans don't have any real stuff in the South Pacific. Now, I would love to send a fleet to Northern Europe to blockade uh, the Germans. But none of our ships, I think, would have range to get there. Um, because we have medium range, and I think you need long range to be able to basically move outside of your um, territory here, basically. Otherwise, you'll suffer major penalties for endurance, which will have negative impacts on uh, fuel levels and things like that. We get a battleship engagement. The estimated enemy force is no intel whatsoever. Obviously, if we're having a battleship engagement, they must have battleships or something in the southeastern seaboard. But apparently we have literally no intel whatsoever that we cannot estimate that they have a battleship at least. Obviously, they choose to decline battle. Not surprising. Uh, convoy defense on the eastern or southeastern seaboard again. They have a battle cruiser, a pre-dreadnought, and two armored cruisers, and again they refuse to get battle. Another convoy defense, this time with an estimated battle cruiser, AMC, and destroyer. And again they refuse battle. And the Delaware is having some issues. We believe that the Germ uh, not the Germans, the British have stolen technology from us. Um, I don't really want to raise tensions with them. It's a little high right now, so I'll just take the prestige. It we're sitting at fifty right now, so I think we're good anyway. Yeah. 
and our new fighter, the Curtis Seagull, is ready for operational service, but initial testing is showing that it is less rugged than hoped for. And due to unfavorable weather, the invasion of the Bismarck Archipelago is delayed. And despite me being on prize rules, we ended up sinking a large liner. Which kind of pissed everybody off. Well, it pissed Japan off. Nobody else cared. I'm assuming it was a Japanese liner then. I don't actually know that for certain. Let's see, so... Still not invading there. They still have not reinforced the region at all. Also, I should probably continue upgrading my bases here because I don't actually know how much I can have here. Well, actually, I assume the game tells me here. So this is the South Pacific, so... 90? Which, depending on exactly... So I have 90 base capacity, I assume is what that's saying. And that would look to be correct, yes. We're using 68 of that with two battle cruisers and two pre-dreadnoughts. Yeah. That ain't so great. And I don't know how much of these each one of these is actually utilizing. But let's just continue on. The Wyoming has condenser trouble. Uh, we can secure even better terms if we crush them completely. A few more months will do it. And peace is concluded with our side gaining large territories and considerable war reparations. So, I can take the Bismarck Archipelago. Cameroon. That's in Africa, isn't it? I I gotta double check this just to make sure, but I believe that's Africa, we're correct. Yes, that is Central Africa. I don't care to take anything in Africa right now. So we're just going to take the Bismarck Archipelago to solidify our hold in the South Pacific. And the other four points we get, we're going to utilize for war reparations. And triple torpedo mounts, not long after getting double. It's been like, what, only a couple turns really since we got double? Oh well, it's fine. Um, so we got better 9-inch guns, which these Pueblos have 9-inch guns. So let's go ahead and give them a quick upgrade. Are you all in the same spot? You are. That saves me a lot of trouble. Now, I could use this to give them additional deck armor. I don't actually know how much additional deck armor that gives. Because the game doesn't actually say. Which is kind of annoying, actually. Now that I think about it, it really is. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and upgrade their guns to quality 1, which are the best quality. So that'll take six, Jesus, six months for that. That's actually a fairly decent amount of time. Oh well. We still need them. Okay, never mind, you're armored cruisers. I was going to say, wait, maybe I can give you torpedoes, but no, you're an armored cruiser, so that ain't happening. Uh, anybody else with 9-inch guns? I don't think so. I think those are the only things I had with 9-inch guns. Because light cruisers are like all 5s or 6s. Yeah. And then the Fredericks that we designed are 10s. And the Brooklyns are old, and they only have 7s. Oh, which apparently I can improve. Oh, no, I haven't given you increased elev- ah. Did I give you guys increased elevation? Please tell me I did. Uh, well, you looked to already have it, so okay, that's fine. Uh, do the Wyomings have it? They do. Do the Kentuckys have them? They do. What about the Indianas? Uh, yeah, they do. Oh, and the Indianas have torpedo protection, which is nice. Ah, here we go. The New Mexico battle cruisers, which were originally pre-dreadnoughts that have gone through an upgrade or two. 
they have the ability to gain. Okay, can't do anything there. Uh, they have the ability. Uh, do the Pueblos have AA that I could have given them? They might. Oh well, it's not that important right now. We'll live. Let's go ahead and put some AA on here with our New Mexico battle cruisers and give you increased elevation. No improved directors. I don't have any other upgrades I can give you right now. I could save myself a little bit of weight if I decrease your secondaries down to two inches rather than the three and a halfs you have right now, but yeah, we'll leave them as is. So that's four months for that. Uh, the Indiana's already had them. What about the Connies? Connies don't have it. Now let's also give them AA. It's. Obviously, yes, it's crappy light AA, which is not particularly useful. And you want to reclassify as a battle cruiser? Why? No. I don't know why you're wanting to reclassify as a battle cruiser. I can't think of a reason. I really can't. It's. I'm pretty sure it's not because of speed. Though I suppose that is a possibility, but I don't think it is. Yeah. I don't know what their deal is, actually. I really don't. But for whatever reason, the game's wanting to reclassify you as a Dreadnought. But I'm not going to let you do that, game. These things are battle cruisers. They were designed as battle cruisers, and they're going to continue as battle cruisers for the foreseeable future. So give those increased elevation and a, an extra thing of director firing. Now when it comes to the next person I'd go to war with, the French and the Japanese are probably my best bets. I still would love to go to war with the British, but we're not quite in a position I think to do that. Well I suppose it's not strictly true, we might be able to do that. Let's go ahead and upgrade. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade the Oklahomas. These things are going to see a major refit, I think, though. Um. Whoops, wrong way. Can I get you to twenty. I can. Still doesn't quite get you to being a dreadnought, though. I don't think there's any way I can get you to be a Dreadnought, actually. I can bulge you. Which will give me an extra 500 displacement. Allow me to up your speed again. And if I... So I need to get you to 23. Is there any way I can get you to 23 without bulging you? It's technically you're at 21 if I do this, not actually 23. Oh, damn it, going the wrong way. I cannot make those s duels, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, no, those have to stay singles. And this sh whole form will not allow greater than 22. And 22 limits you to being a... okay. Hmm. Okay, I guess the Oklahomas are not going to be able to become battle cruisers. They're just going to be stuck here as um, three dreadnoughts, which I mean is okay. They're still 
decent ships. They're still going to see a big refit, though. Up their speed just a little bit. Do I want to go ahead and just say scoot and get you to 22? I think I might. Holy crap, 21 months for- nope, never mind. You're not gonna go through that big of a refit, apparently. I don't know why it's such a massive increase. We'll get you to 20. You know what, that's fine. I'll put you at 20. You still have issues with those secondaries, annoyingly. <sighs> yeah, no, we'll keep those at two and a half, 20 knots. Uh, okay, I can get that to there. Decrease the size of the second or the armor on the secondary is just a little bit. I give you no. No more secondaries. Unless I drop down to fives, and then I can. Then you run into insufficient space for the AA. How many can I put there? Okay, I can put 24 of that. But then that's not able to get to there. The ship is well overweight again. If I bold you, I can do it, but then you're basically again just back down to the 18 you already were. Huh. We're sort of just going to try and min max this as much as we can. And I think that's the best we're going to be able to do. So 14 months, a little over a year for a refit, which is a little longer than I would like, but it's useful. So we're going to do that. Um, The Illinois. I think I'm going to probably put the Illinois through a conversion, I think. Decrease that to two inches. Give you as much AA as I can. Can you do out of curiosity? No, you are limited to 22 as well. How many of these did you have? Game doesn't show there. You know what? You don't need tertiaries. That's fine. Increased elevation. That give you another set of secondaries. God, 21 months for that. I think it's the speed increase. When I get it to 22, it significantly increases the amount of time spent. So no, we're not going to do that. Change of plan. Uh oh, I need to put Corvettes on foreign station. Um, oh yes, our aircraft. Do I have any new types of... No, I don't. Okay, well the Curtis Seagull is reliable at an average rating. Better than the poor of the Lockheed Lodestar. I believe it was the toughness. Something about the toughness. Uh, let's just go ahead and obsolete the, the uh, Lodestar. Because it's not really needed. Also, do I have any air bases? I don't want those. Uh, no, I can't build any air bases right now, and I don't want those airships. They're worthless. 
But sadly, I don't know if I can get rid of them. I don't think I can. So I'm going to be stuck with airships that I'm paying for. And the Bismarck Archipelago, because I don't believe there's any way for me to get rid of that. That installation. Annoyingly. That, that is very annoying. I mean, I could be wrong. Oh no, here we go. Never mind, I can. Wonderful. Scrap that. I don't want that. Thank you. Also saves a little bit of money on naval aircraft. Uh, Dreadnought South Carolina has been commissioned. South Carolina is that, and that means you need to go through a rebuild. Do we have any more Indianas come on out? No, we don't. Okay, wonderful. Uh, baffled by the problem of improved armor testing methods and CVL conversions. Wonderful. And Boeing has developed an improved float plane scout. Is it actually better? Oh, yes, that is a decent boost in max speed and range as well. Yeah, we're going to take that. Great job, Boeing. Okay, so we have the Chicago's here. Clear those, just basically remove everything this has. Give it a flight deck. Give it, say, 10 aircraft. I know, game. I know it's overweight. I'm going to try and figure out a way I can do this. I'm sure there's a way. I say that, actually. I don't think there is. We're going to go and... Can I do it with the... Can I? Will you let me do this game? Please tell me the answer is yes, because I kind of need it to be yes. Light deck. Uh, okay, you need at least 20 knots, which means major rebuild. There we go. Uh, 20 aircraft. Can I get 20? Uh, I can get 23, which is an odd number. I do not want an odd number. Uh, give you... An AA complement. I will give you five inch turrets on the port forward, starboard forward, port aft, and starboard aft single. Really? You think five inches is too big for this? That's actually shocking, game. Uh. Yeah, I suppose that doesn't need to be as heavy as it is. We'll drop that down to, say, 5. Still complaining about that? Nope, not anymore. Wonderful. Oh, f can I do 4.5 without you complaining? I can. Okay. We're going to bulge this. Technically, I'm still 20 knots. Not actually true, but as far as the game is concerned it is, so that's all that matters, really. You know what, we're just gonna go with 20, I think. Can I avoid bulging you? I should be able to. If I... Just kinda... Kinda angle things a little bit. 130 is okay. We'll take away some of your AA complement. And that allows us to avoid putting you overweight. But increased elevation on that. We're actually going to go ahead and drop the turrets down to 4. No, it's just easier. And give you back some of your AA complement. So you have a measly 20 aircraft, which is not a whole lot, but I need to. My understanding is you need to do a CVL conversion to be able to actually be able to unlock the ability to build purpose built CVLs. 
as a result, you got to do this. So it doesn't matter if it's a particularly good design. I just need to do it. Um, that's my understanding. I could be certainly wrong on that, but that's my understanding. Yeah, we'll stick with the five inch guns so that we could maybe dual purpose them if this design lasts long enough, but I don't expect it to. Really don't. I'm going to actually also, I think, send the Montanas through something similar. Need to be at least 20, put you down to four. Get rid of all your secondaries and all your tertiaries, flight deck, 20 aircraft. 130 rounds was the number, correct? I believe that was the number. Uh, we'll keep that at two and a half, that's fine. Just double check, yeah. 130 and you won't complain. Can I maybe get you? No, I can't. You're gonna max out at the 20. give a speed uh, speed engine priority, which would give me a bit extra weight to throw around, but I don't think it's going to help at all, really. And just give you dedicated AA. To fill on the rest, I could give you no secondaries. <laughs> I was about to say, maybe I can give you a couple, but no, I can't. So you're just going to have four or five inch guns. Um... Two at the front, two in the rear. 20 gun, or 20 aircraft. Again, not a lot, but it's something. 44 light AA and a speed of 20 knots. This is fine. This is just to have some stuff. Yeah, so you cannot continue with high research priority for a shipboard aircraft operation without an operational aircraft carrier, which the only way I can get an operational aircraft carrier is to do a conversion to a CVL. So those are going to take a year. While I wait for that, I am going to... Okay, I think the game automatically moved that down to medium priority for me. So thank you, game. That's nice of you. I didn't actually expect you to do that. Uh, spy from France. I'll take the budget. Thank you. Because I could use it. Okay, so let's see. I don't have anything in Southeast Asia, or excuse me, not Southeast Asia, the South Pacific. So I'm going to send two of the Wyomings that I have in Southeast Asia to the South Pacific. I'm going to send the... You know what, I think I'm going to probably send the New Mexicos once they're done with their reconstruction. I'll send them to Southeast, uh, the South Pacific as well. How much do I have there? I have 120. I should probably design a new armored cruiser or, you know, actually build those Minneapolises. Oh no, I am. I am building those Minneapolises. They're just taking so damn long. And the Houstons. I think it's because we had to adjust our funding a little bit, so... Yeah, that's all gonna take a while. I'm gonna go ahead and... or not, not halt, I meant to press accelerate. Let me go ahead and accelerate the construction or the conversions of all our CVLs just so that we have them a little bit faster. Uh, Coppa Italy. Um, you know it, Italy. I'm going to take the prestige. Thank you. An unexpected advancement in torpedo technology for enhanced pressure bottle and seaplane scouts. And now I can build air bases, finally. So, since I can build aircraft, or 
rather air bases now. Uh, now the question becomes, where do I build them? So, I'm going to want them in useful places. So, Portland seems like a nice place for a air base. Because that'll allow me to cover New Brunswick and uh, Nova Scotia. It will not get me to Newfoundland um, until maybe very late in the game, but by that point it's not particularly useful anymore. Uh, we are going to also, I think, build one in Bougainville, but the question is do I put it in Shortland or Buka? I'm going to go with Shortland. Philippines, I'm probably going to build two, I think. One in Apari. And uh, Lingayan, or however it's pronounced. Manila, I maybe later. Maybe. We'll see, it just depends. Um, I should probably put one in Loganville here as well. So it can cover New Caledonia and maybe a little bit later Fiji. We're not going to bother with Polynesia, that's too far away to be particularly useful, I think. We're not going to bother with the West Coast. The, the Caribbean is where the question becomes. So Antilles is potentially nice for covering Port of Spain. Uh, Fort, uh, we're going to do Fort de France. Luckily, I think, uh, we're going to actually do it in Guantanamo. Luckily, the one in Guantanamo should be able to cover Haiti as well, or at least sort of the approaches right here if they try to go to Port-au-Prince. I'm probably going to, I think, do the entire eastern seaboard, though. So it's easier if I go here. Eastern U.S., Boston, yep. Philadelphia, New York, Norfolk, Charles eh, yeah. Charleston, <laughs> uh, Wilmington. We're not going to bother with the Gulf Coast, I think. I think the Gulf Coast, well, Miami might actually be useful. Uh, Tampa not so much, but my, yeah, Miami's useful. I think most of our aircraft at Miami might actually be able to make it to Grand Bahama, so Freeport. I think they might be a little bit shy for Nassau. And if they can't do it right now, I think they'll be able to do it shortly. It's just, they may not be quite there. Potentially. Uh, float plane search priority, yes, and I don't know really how useful elite pilot training is, to be completely honest. We're going to go ahead and do it. I do know it does result in some limitations. I believe it only affects carrier-borne aircraft. Um, and it does, I believe, limit the amount of aircraft you could technically have um, in service. So training capacity for carrier aircrew is 50. Uh, Balkans. Balkans, Balkans, Balkans. Who do I want to blame? Well, I don't really f want to fight the British right now. Yeah, I really don't want to fight the British right now. We're not quite in that position yet. We just fought the Germans, and they don't have anything else I want, so I'd only get reparations. Italy, I don't really have an ability to fight. Because we don't share any... Well, that's not true, actually. They are in Southeast Asia, aren't they? I can't go to the map to double-check that, but I believe they're in Southeast Asia. And France is New Caledonia, which isn't that important to me. So, you know, we're just going to go ahead and blame it on the Italians. And double-check. Yes. They own part of Vietnam. Which I wouldn't complain about taking off their hands if I 
ever had the opportunity. So, yeah. Ooh, we are over our base cap here in uh, Southeast Asia. I did not realize this. Go ahead and improve our bases in the Philippines. Come on, game. Give me, give me Guam. Thank you. And the Northern Marianas. And that's it, actually. How far over am I? Uh, decent amount. But those upgrades, I think, should take care of it. We'll see. But I, th I think that'll take care of it. Is it 12 months for all of them? It is going to be 12 months for all of them. Okay. What do I have in Southeast Asia that doesn't need to be in Southeast Asia right now? Well, the South Pacific is up to 120 right now, which is great. Oh, also, the only things I have there are the North Dakota and North Carolina, which are both Wyoming's. And with two of those and a total of 46 points, I would indicate that each one of my dreadnoughts, at least when it comes to the Wyoming's, is worth 23 points, basically, um, of base capacity, which is a useful tidbit of information. Okay, well, let's see. Anything else in Southeast Asia that doesn't need to be there? Um, a lot of Fredericks. I'm going to take two of these Fredericks and move them to the South Pacific. I don't know how much that'll help me, but it's something. Uh, you're new. You're old. Uh, the Jarvises are actually even older. Actually, the Bain Bridges are even older. We're going to put the Bain Bridges in the South Pacific. The Jarvises can go to the Caribbean. Do I want to put you guys to a rebuild real quick? No, I don't think I will because... I don't think it's possible for me to get you to have the triple torpedo mounts. I'm going to have to design a brand new destroyer if I want triple torpedo mounts. Well, I like that. I'm not big on the aft centerline turret, so drop that. Still only local firing for our destroyers, which is kind of annoying. 33. How does, out of curiosity, how does that compare to a, say, British destroyer? Ah, uh, what's the most recent thing that I can find here? It looks to be 1918s. Oh no, here we go, 1919. It's 32. So, 33 would get you a little bit faster. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Again, drop the aft center line. I don't care for it. I could give you inclined belt. Uh, no to the cramped accommodations. We're not going to do that. Because I don't think it's going to help you at all. Especially because you have literally no belt armor anyway. Game, I kind of like the triple setup that you had going before. For a total of nine tubes. So, can we get that back? Somehow? Uh, there we go. Uh, mine sweeping gear, yes. No decay guns. I cannot give you increased depth charge. Storage. One thirty is the bare minimum I can have for that. This has literally no effect whatsoever on that so we'll leave that be if i get rid of your aa because let's be real you're a destroyer you're much faster in theory you don't need it also i cap out at 1500 correct yes okay let's try this again c game i knew we could make this work i knew it was possible for us to get a 33 knot Not quite 34, sadly. Uh, two 5-inch guns, thank you. Can I do 6s? No, not quite. Without a rate of fire penalty, which... 
You know what? Don't wanna don't wanna do that. Uh, let's see. It's an extra three weight per turret. And then a little bit extra what? Another six? Yeah, like another six weight for the ammo. And this gets you to be able to pen up to round a, a little shy of five inches of belt armor. You will suffer a rate of fire penalty because technically you're not allowed to have six inch guns on a destroyer of this size uh, without any penalty. We're just kind of ignoring that. So if I keep you at 5, I should be able to get you dual purposes relatively easily. Although, if memory serves me correctly, dual purpose for destroyers is a completely separate technology than normal dual purpose. So actually, you probably won't be able to do that anytime soon. Let's just give you some secondaries. How many until you complain about secondaries? Six is the most I can give you. So we'll do that. I can't give you any mines for whatever reason yet. I guess we just haven't researched mines. I honestly have not been paying that much attention. We got a flat deck on top, all or nothing armor. A scheme for our destroyer here. Which in theory saves us weight. Because the armor is focused on areas where it's important. So, you know. Places like the magazine, and things like that. We don't have dual mounts, correct? No, we still don't have dual mounts in 1924. That's fine, we'll live. So, 150 rounds per gun, which might be a little bit excessive for a destroyer, but that's fine. Three AA guns. Which I'm assuming is supposed to be like three per side, technically speaking. Um, yeah, did I say anything about AA? I was kidding. I, I meant no AA compliment. Rather, you have four inch secondaries that will eventually get dual purpose, which should be able to be fine. Um, I mentioned something about dual purpose for destroyers. I don't. I'm screwing up on that. It's not actually a separate tech. I believe it's actually just a case of dual purpose for main guns is a separate technology than dual purpose for secondaries and tertiaries. As a result, until we research that, those five inch main guns are stuck as just anti ship weapons. They're useless against. Aircraft. They just literally cannot be used against aircraft, period. Uh, this is fine. This thing will have literally no AA ability for now. Which is fine, because it's 33 knots. It's kind of hard to hit a fast-moving destroyer, to be completely honest. So I don't expect it to get attacked by aircraft particularly often. And even if it does, I'm fairly hopeful that it'll be able to avoid taking any hits. So we'll go ahead and send that design through for its study. Our base is completed. Go to the build screen. I'm going to go ahead and build 10. I got a lot of money in the bank that I got to spend. Uh, the New Mexico's are going to go to the South Pacific, so I have battle cruisers in the South Pacific. Uh, we are no longer over our capacity in Southeast Asia as a result of moving some of those things around. Are that? 
Scientists report they've suffered a setback in figuring out the concept of dual gun mounts on light cruisers. That's a shame. Negative one quality 17 inch guns. Don't plan to do those. So, air groups. Go ahead. So, Naval Air Station Boston. Just auto add because I'm lazy. It is interesting that you're choosing to go for a 8-4 of fighters and flying boats. That seems to be the case everywhere. I mean, I'm fine with that. And a communist coup has taken place in Russia. The British government is offering to sell us the rights to improve ballistic caps. Yeah, I'm not going to decline that. That's a stupid idea. And our scientists are well on their way to understanding secondary directors. And we... Thanks, game. Now I have mines for my light cruisers and destroyers. You know. That destroyer that I literally just designed. Granted, I didn't have the space to put any mines on it. But nonetheless... So, Russia has gone communist. Which is interesting and also doesn't affect us in any real way. Um, the main downside of this is that if we go to war with Russia, they have the ability now to declare that war as a total war. Which will make ending the war a royal pain in the future. We're going to go ahead and spy medium on everybody except Italy, who we're going to spy high on. New docks completed. Our top spy has managed to get the blueprints of the Italian armored cruiser, the Francesco Ferruccio, that is currently under construction. I'll have to update my spreadsheet. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Now you decide to inform me that, hey, I know I auto-did everything, but I did a bad job. I didn't actually put 20 everywhere. Whoopsie, do you want to change that? Yeah, I want you to fix that. Thank you. Uh, continue building dock sizes. I've drawn a blank on if I mentioned it. Uh, so by default in this game, the AI has specific templates for ships it will use, uh, which are historical templates basically. Uh, as a result, the AI will eventually reach a point where it stops building ships that are bigger than a certain size. I don't know what that size is off the top of my head. My understanding is that the game more or less caps out on ship designs basically being ships that have to fall within um, the parameters of the Washington Naval Treaty. So, like, really, the enemy ships are not going to be particularly big. Um, the biggest things are maybe, like, for the British, the King George V, which is, what, like, 46,000 or something like that tons? Uh, displacement, so... Basically anything under 50, they're, er, they're basically not going to build anything over 50,000, more or less. Uh, that's not a hindrance to us, unless obviously a naval treaty occurs. So, for us at least, we can build absolute behemoths of, I believe, dock sizes caps out at something like 90,000 or somewhere around there. So we can build absolutely ridiculous like 90,000 ton behemoths with 20 inch guns if we let the game run long enough and obviously if we get lucky enough to research tech that allows us to do that. As things stand right this second, that's not a thing for us. Italy wants to sell me quality zero 14 inch guns. Yes, please. And there's our secondary directors for 
secondary batteries and light cruiser main directories or main battery rather so now my light cruisers can have directors uh, firing and I can slap it on the secondaries which will help make them better but um, yeah this this is gonna take time and 14 inch gun so 5,000 is 14.696 and at, five, at a range of 5,000 yards it now jumps to 16.28 so now we can pen 16 inches of belt armor which I don't think our intel says anything about anybody having 16 inches of belt armor um, this is not necessarily fully accurate. The game does sort of reflect Fog of War, so I'd have to go back and look through my previous recordings to see if we actually got exact intel on a camber down. But I don't think we did. Either way, the largest things right now I'm seeing are like 11 and a half inches of belt armor. Granted, I'm only looking at the British, but you know, they're our main adversary at the end of the day, so that's part of the reason why I'm doing that. Oh, we got a 14 here with the uh, Kaiman from the French. 11 and a half, 10, 9 and a half. So, I mean, technically, in theory, our Wyomings can already pen without any real issue. The armor of pretty much anything else the enemy can throw at us. So this isn't that big of a deal. Um, so director on secondaries will help with accuracy. So that's a nice little thing for us. I think that's all we can really do here. So six months for that. That's a little longer than I would like, but I suppose to a degree it's understandable. So three of those are in Southeast Asia and two are in the South Pacific. We have time. We're not in any immediate rush. Well, we just stole better eight inch guns from the French. And apparently the French did not find out about that. So that's nice. Uh, let's go ahead and look for a new flying boat. Uh, range and speed. It's been about four years. You know, so let's let's see if we can get a new design that's better than that. There's an internal upheaval in Cuba. Great Britain is apparently sending a force there. Uh, no. Uh, well, do I want to? So the reality is, I think the French or the not the French, the British are just going to tell me to piss off if I try and do it myself. So let's push for an international force to thwart their expansionist plans. And as a result of international pressure, we have managed to force the British to recall their expedition, their expedition and send in the international forces to restore order to Cuba. Now, I wouldn't complain about taking over Cuba myself, but I'm sure as hell not going to let the British take it. I'm asked which nation I think we're most likely to go to war with in the future. Well, that's obviously going to be Italy. Though Japan's also a viable option, and Japan at least I can already invade Formosa. I don't have to wait until the end of the war to take what I want. Change of plans, guys. We're going to blame everything on the Japanese. And Brewster's got a new aircraft for us. Uh, it's quite a bit better, and it does now actually have bombs, so it's somewhat useful compared to our other ones. We'll take that. Just, you know, because it's better. Uh, we are still looking for a new flying boat that we put out in, on, on, uh, not an order, or an offer. 
we put out a request for. Um, if the ones we get back are better than that new one, we'll obviously obsolete the one that we just got offered. And as a result of me telling Japan, or basically saying in the press that Japan is our next target for a war, Japan seems to have decided, hey, uh, America, do, do you want to have an alliance? I know we had one before and we decided not to renew it because reasons. But can we have an alliance again? Do I want to give them one though? Because let's be real here. They're not that powerful. They're basically on par with the French and the Russians in terms of naval budget. Um, in terms of dreadnoughts, they're equal to the French. At least in terms of numbers, their tonnage is actually lower. And the French are building more. While the Japanese are not building more. Uh, they seem to be rebuilding something though. Because something's going on there. I'm seeing a... Uh, those numbers indicate something's going on. So they may not be building anything, but they're definitely rebuilding something and... Obviously, it doesn't get counted as in service in that case, but it also, for whatever reason, doesn't get counted as being built because reasons. Uh, they have more battle cruisers than the French, but I think they might be smaller. Yeah, I think they're smaller than the French because the French have two in service and they've got a 45,000 some odd tonnage while you have four in service and you're at a hundred thousand i think you might be smaller for your battle cruisers compared to the french but that doesn't necessarily mean it's worse it's just they're smaller um no i think i'm going to tell the japanese to go pound sand Close to mastering efficient hull form, and set back on improved depth charges. That gave us more budget as well, which is nice. No, damn it game. Those are not supposed to be halted. I completely forgot to unhalt those, so we're behind on our CVL conversions, because I did not realize that accelerating did not automatically cancel out the halt order. So, I'm an idiot. Those should be much further along than they are. But because I screwed up, they're not. Now the reality is these Houstons are probably going to have to go through a rebuild. Like as soon as they enter service. We like... Okay, we only a couple of months ago got quality negative one 17 inch guns and we just got quality zero now so that's nice there's the first Minneapolis so let's uh, upgrade your fire control give you director secondaries um, oh what can I do here uh, well turret tops need to be two inches I did I kind of screwed up on that, I'll admit. That's my fault. We'll take away some of your torpedoes. Oh. Never mind. Change of plans. You cannot have director secondaries. Because we have not researched it yet. Uh, but looks like I still am going to have to take away your, uh, torpedoes, I'm afraid. So, a little bit extra AA. It's not great AA, but, you know, it's a little bit extra. Now, I could give you mines. Also means you don't have enough space up top for that. Okay, let's... Can we do that? I can, okay. Can I switch these to triples? 
Maybe, actually, I can. You know what? Screw it. You don't need mines. I'm going to take away two torpedo tubes. Which will take you from... Uh, eight in total, four on each side, down to two sets of triples, one on each side of the ship. So one port, one starboard. Give you a little bit extra AA. Give you director main guns. Can I give you... No, I can't. Not quite. Well, I say not quite. That's not true. This is only slightly overweight, so technically I could, but we're not going to. This is fine. I think this is perfectly fine. This is a, a good design, I think. So, Minneapolis. I know you just entered service, and uh, you didn't even finish your work up. Uh... 11 inch belt armor on this German dreadnought. I don't care about airships, game. There's a reason I have the airship stuff at low priority. You need to be rebuilt. Seven more months for our CVL conversions. Cincinnati. Efficient hull form reduces the engine horsepower requirements and our new flying boat offer that we made. So Martin has one that has... It's a little bit better than the Brewster Buccaneer. In most stats. Uh, but it does have the ability to carry larger bombs. So I think we're going to take that. It's not a significant improvement, but it's still better. So the Brewster Buccaneer, as soon as it has finished its couple turns of development, we're going to toss it, basically. Because, turns out, it ain't that great. Uh, how many submarines do I got? Well, it's better if I check the Almanac, I suppose. We have 39. The Germans have 55. We're going to build more submarines. Um... Medium range. 12 more of those, thank you very much. You could accelerate the construction of these. No, oh, no, actually I can't because apparently... Even though it's an option to right-click and say accelerate, I actually cannot. This is fine. These Minneapolis's need to go through a rebuild. Uh, anything else? I don't think so. Ah, some of the Wyomings are finishing. I uh, say some. Only one's finished, actually. Let's go ahead and send the Indianas in, I think. They need it. You are just a little bit short. Is there any way I can get you? Preferably without removing AA. You know what? No. I think you'll live. We'll remove your dedicated AA. Because eventually you'll replace it with dual purpose tertiaries, I think is what we're going to end up... Yeah, I think we're going to use these tertiaries as our dual purpose. Technically I can use both the secondaries and the tertiaries as dual purpose, but then there will be a penalty to the smaller... Um... Caliber when it comes to accuracy or rate of fire or something like that, which could potentially be significant, so we're not going to do that. We're going to go with four inch tertiaries that will be dual purpose once we eventually unlock that technology. But for now, so that you can have director secondaries, so your secondaries are more accurate, we are going to go ahead and skimp a little bit on your AA, uh, dedicated AA rather, which, again, I think will be okay. I really do. Uh, oh, you have 16-inch guns. It was the 14-inch guns that got upgraded. We don't have yet... yet have better 16-inch guns. These 16-inch guns are still really good, though. If I get within 5,000 yards, I can pen 18 inches of belt armor. I'm pretty sure no ship design that the AI will build has 18 inches of belt armor. So this ship will never have to close within 5,000 yards to be able to pen an enemy, I'm pretty sure. Watch me be wrong about that, though, of course.
Uh, we'll hold off on the Kentuckys, I think, because I think the president will complain if I try and do those right now. So that's going to be it for this part. I will see you all next time for some more Rule the Waves 3, where we will maybe be gearing up for a war with the Japanese or the Italians or maybe even the British, because apparently the British have a little bit more tension than the Japanese and Italians do with us. Uh, on a related note, I might look to... Holy crap, actually. We overtook the British for naval budget. I did not catch this last time. We have a larger naval budget than the British. Out of curiosity, are the British upping their naval spending at all? Because they're supposed to. They have. Last time they did it was July. They haven't done it since July. It's August 1925 now, and the last they did it was July. So, um... Okay, well, so that was just last month. They decided not to do it two months in a row, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that we well overtook them. Holy crap. We are like 200,000 um, as the game represents the values. More than the British in terms of our naval budget. I could sit on this monthly balance that we have, this income, for a little bit. Because again, you only start to run into issues with money being taken away from you when you get to a, basically above 50% of your yearly budget. With a yearly budget of 700 some odd thousand, I can get up to like 400 and some odd. Or excuse me, not 400 and some odd, 300 and some odd thousand. Uh, basically 350 thousand. Or 350,000 plus. So we've... We might sit on this budget just so we have some money. Um, in the bank. In the event that, you know, we need to... Start mass producing stuff. Like, I don't know. A new Dreadnought? Maybe. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But that'll be it for this part. I will see you all next time. Until then, goodbye and farewell.